It's been nearly a month now since the Russian DLC launch for Battlefield 1, and that's given me plenty of time to unlock the brand new weapons that came with it. I've got about 90% of them unlocked, there are a couple of variants that are still evading me, and I've unlocked at least one of the two variants for weapons that have more than one variant. And I've unlocked the two new secondary options as well, so I wanted to answer the question, was the grind worth it? There's still a free trial going on right now for Battlefield 1 in the name of the Tsar, so any player of Battlefield 1 can get into these DLC servers, and they can unlock the DLC weapons as well. So, in the last few days, is it worth unlocking some of the variants that you haven't got your hands on yet? Well, let's find out. First of all, we'll take a look at the Assault class. We have the 1900 Double Barrel Shotgun and the SMG-08 here. Now I'll start with the shotgun because it offers something completely different to really anything else that we've had so far in this game. You get two shells of pain and they can be combined together by switching the fire mode and that will almost guarantee a kill in close quarters. The factory is your standard shotgun firing pellets and the slug switches those pellets for a proper bullet and it can deal much greater damage at range provided you've got good accuracy. Of the two, I prefer combining both barrels of the factory variant and taking advantage of that quick reload, and you can mop up most players in close quarters, but if you like a challenge, you should try out the slug variant. My only stipulation with the slug variant is that the Model 10A shotgun offers you perhaps greater killing potential as it's a pump action shotgun and it has more rounds available before you have to reload. And not to mention, you get a nice optical sight on the Model 10A slug for better target acquisition. The double barrel doesn't have that option and I would have liked it if it had but then it wouldn't really feel like a proper double barrel shotgun. It's really basic but it's really fun to use. Both variants are worth the grind but I prefer the factory. The SMG-08 is an interesting weapon not only in its looks but in its statistics as well. Both the factory and the optical variant, they offer a large 80 round magazine to fire from but its rate of fire is just 450 rounds a minute. And that means those bullets are firing a little bit too leisurely to make the weapon lethal in close quarters. It's more of a mid-range SMG where the bullets are plenty enough to bring down players and it lives up to its image of being a mini light machine gun. It's become a proper mid-range weapon for the assault class. However, I'd say it's trumped by the MP18, which is its direct competitor. The MP18 has a faster rate of fire, and it has a variant that makes its hip fire spread nice and tight, and in close quarters, that's really important. The factory variant of the SMG-08, it does recover faster from bullet spread and recoil, but overall it suffers from a wide spread. The optical is the better variant for mid-range combat, and that's where I'd argue you should be using the SMG-08. Was it worth the grind to unlock these? I'd say yes, but more so for the looks than overall usability. Moving on next to the Medic class, and here we have two brand new rifles. We have the Fedorov Aftermat and the General Liu rifle. I'm going to start with the Fedorov and basically declare it the best weapon to be added with the Russian DLC because, in my opinion, it is a game changer for the Medic class. A fully automatic rifle, almost an assault rifle, it gives the Medic some proper firepower at mid to close range, which is where the class, I think, has suffered for some time. You need to be in the thick of the action as a Medic, reviving teammates and handing out the health, and up until now, the class didn't really have a weapon that could compete with SMGs and shotguns of the Assault class, which of course are designed to dominate up close. Now the Medic has that firepower to really deliver some pain in those areas and still be just as effective for the rest of the team. You can still be reviving players and getting the health thrown out there. Of the two variants, I prefer the Trench, but the Optical will give you some benefit for slightly long-range battles. It does have a proper Optical sight after all. And the General Liu Rifle? I just don't really see how this weapon can compete directly with the likes of the Fedorov. However, I think it competes with other weapons in the class, and that's where it kind of fits in. When I saw that this rifle was another semi-auto facing off against the full auto Fedorov, I felt a little bit sorry for it because in terms of popularity, I think most players are going to go straight to the Fedorov. I know I did at least. 
That said, the Liu is almost a direct upgrade to the Selvslader 1906, which of course is the Medic level 10 weapon. The Liu can hold six rounds via an internal magazine, as opposed to the Selvslader's five. And this gives the Liu a boost in killing potential. Theoretically, the Liu can, much more easily, kill two players per magazine, whereas the Selvslader needed a headshot thrown in there to make sure two kills could be achieved before reloading. They have the same damage output and exactly the same damage drop-off, but the Liu has a little bit more recoil to deal with. If you go with the Storm variant, then this recoil is reduced somewhat and it is much closer to the Selvslader's. If you're all about that accurate medic gameplay, then the General Liu might suit you. Is it worth the grind though? I'd say if you already have the Selvslader 1906 unlocked, then you might as well stick with that. It's still more accurate than the General Liu is, and that's really important when you're firing a semi-auto rifle. Moving on to the support class now, and I know I've already said that the Fedorov is the best weapon of the DLC, but if there was a class that got the biggest bump in weapon spice, then it has to be the support class. Both the Perino and the MG14, they offer something unique to the class that hasn't been on offer before, and the meta of the class got a massive shake-up as well. I'll start with my favourite of the two, the MG14. This weapon was technically a mounted machine gun used on airplanes during the war, but a few of them were converted into infantry units. This makes them perfect for taking planes out of the sky. Get this thing bipodded with the low weight or suppressive variants, aim at a plane and start shooting. It's almost instant profit. Now I always knew shooting at planes was a deterrent, but the MG14 is almost an AA cannon in its own right. The only thing that you really have to watch out for though is the overheat. It kicks in after just 35 bullets fired and with a 700 round rate of fire, you're going to reach that pretty quickly. This new machine gun is 100% worth the grind, even if it does require you to take down two planes for the low weight variant. Trust me, once you get it in your hands, you'll know it was worth it. The Perino is just as awesome, I'd say, but takes second place, but it is a totally different kettle of fish, but equally worth the unlock grind. Both the low weight and suppressive variants comes with a huge hopper-like 120 round magazine, which can be topped off with strips of 20 rounds. It also has the longest overheat threshold of any LMG in Battlefield 1, cutting off at 65 bullets. You're unlikely to ever hit that overheat level, but if you need to lay down some suppressive fire, then this is the weapon for you. Both variants come with a bipod equipped, which makes it perfect for holding down a hallway or something like that. Really good on linear maps like Suez and Argon Forest. The Scout class is up next, and naturally we have two new rifles. We have the Mosin Nagan and the Viterli rifle. I'm going to start with the Mosin Nagant, however, because this is likely one of the flagship inclusions in this DLC purely because it's the standard issue rifle of the Russian army, but in my opinion it doesn't do enough to really compete at a high level with some of the other choices we have now. 5 round internal magazine, fairly good hip fire accuracy and a fast bullet velocity don't quite make up for the slow rechamber and reload speeds which can put you at a massive disadvantage at mid range and the sweet spot range doesn't quite feel as effective as what the king, the SMLE can offer. Of the two variants though, I'd say the marksman is the one you want to use whereas the infantry really suffers with the lack of a high powered scope. The Viterli rifle is somewhat of an oddity in this DLC and probably the weapon I look forward to the least. Interestingly, however, it gives the Kingpin SMLE a good run for its money at close range. Its sweet spot range is 20 to 60 meters or so, and that sits with the Martini Henry being a really good choice at close range, but it has a nice four round internal magazine. The carbine variant also comes with an optical sight which is helpful for hitting some of those shots closer to the 60 meter point and beyond. Inside 20 meters also, the rifle will do a minimum of 90 damage, which is perfect for following up with a secondary pistol. Overall, it's a good rifle for mid to close range, but it really does lack strength at long range. I'd say this one is definitely worth the grind for sure. And lastly, we have the two pistols. These are by far the easiest two to unlock, 
we have the Nagant Revolver and the Obrez. The Obrez is an awesome pocket rifle which deals massive damage up close and the Nagant Revolver offers good hip fire capabilities. Both are worth the grind and are far easier than the rest of the weapons so I'd say just go and unlock them anyway. Overall, this DLC has been awesome for the weapon choices and it trumps the French DLC by an absolute country mile. Most of the new weapons are worth the grind, but one thing is for sure, they all seem to offer some unique benefits that so far haven't been present in Battlefield 1. Let me know your thoughts down below, maybe tell me which of the weapons is your brand new favourite and I'll try and read as many comments as I can. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.